Hey guys, welcome to my new build series on my long range plane. Um, thought I'd just basically go through and do a quick dry assemble on the plane before I said too much about it. So I've got a rough idea of where I'm going with the project. Show you guys a couple of modifications that I've made so far and a few little you know, idiosyncrasies I found with the plane. So let's get into it. So basically I've gone ahead and done uh, a really good little dry assemble so far. Everything's clicked in, nothing's glued at the moment, all the carbon fibre carbon fiber spars are in. I've test fitted all of my equipment and I've test fitted all the servos. Uh, and basically, let's have a quick look at how everything went. So, the very first thing um, you might want to, to note is the airframe as it sits right now is 360 grams. So that's carbon fibre spars, all complete, no glue. Um, that's just the airframe alone so you guys can kind of work on what it's going to kind of weigh with your power system and your equipment so alright so let's have a look at how I'm planning on doing my build uh, I'm planning on using a, a little F1 all-in-one controller to do my flight stabilization uh, with a little M8 uh, GPS because that has an onboard BEC, I don't need a BEC built into my ESC, so I'm actually using a quadcopter ESC, nice 30 amp one. Uh, and I'm also using a 2212-1400 kV motor with a 8 inch propeller. So let's how, see how all, all that fits in. So the very first modification I did to the plane was there was already an existing bay at the top here for the ESC. I've widened that slightly now and that's where my GPS is going to sit. I'm then going to put either some clear tape or a clear piece of plastic over the top so it's um, out of the elements. So if I do fly through clouds, I'm not going to get a, any water integration in there. The next thing I've done with mine is I've decided that I'm going to place the ESC up here. I wanted it in the airstream, so it's actually going to get cooled from the air going over the top. Now there wasn't actually uh, a cut out here, I've actually cut this out myself and that's going to go straight out to the motor. So nice and easy, nice and streamlined so far. Next thing you might want to have a look at is the actual motor itself. Now I'm using uh, an 8 inch propeller here. Now if we go flush, the 8 inch propeller is actually going to hit. So it's not really designed for that sort of purpose. It's actually designed, the motor is actually sitting all the way in there. And if that's the case, you're not gonna be able to run any more than a seven inch propeller. So I'm actually gonna run the motor out and up slightly on a standoff that I'm gonna design and build. And that's just gonna clear an eight inch propeller. So if you are designing this and you want to go for an 8 inch propeller, you need to plan on the motor actually hanging out the back of the frame. If you want the motor inside and you're going to run like a nice long in runner, you might want to up KV a little bit and run a 7 inch propeller. Okay, so let's start disassembling it and we can have a good look at how it's actually constructed. So what they've done is they have separated the wing into two halves. And in those two halves, you actually have a little flap which is going to be holding in your carbon fiber rod. Now this is a, a carbon fiber rod they have supplied with the kit. Uh, you'll notice that it isn't a, a woven carbon fiber, it's actually a pultruded carbon fiber. So if you do crack it, it is going to splinter and it is just going to fall apart. So I've decided that I think it's okay, I'm going to use it in the kit, I'm not going to upgrade it. But if you think that's not quite strong enough for you, you might want to go ahead and when you order the kit, you can go ahead and you know, get another length and uh, get yourself some good um, carbon fiber. But I think it's gonna be good enough. Now, I'm not planning on gluing all of this together. I'm planning on gluing this section into here, and then actually putting a little bracket inside the foam, and I'm actually gonna screw in through the top section through a nice big flat, probably 3D printed washer, in through a hole, and I've already put a hole in there so I can mark it. In through there, it's going to pin it, so that way I can just disassemble, uh, I can undo a servo and go from there, and I'll be able to pack it up nice and small for, for postage. So I'm not planning on having the wings solidly glued. 
if postage is an issue, like uh, packing it up so you can you know, put it in the back of your car isn't a big issue, you've got a nice big station wagon or you know it's an easy way for you to transport it, go ahead and glue it all together. But that might be an issue for me, so I'm going to start out by not gluing it together. So I'm just going to glue this section to the wing and then I'm just going to slide this in and put a fixing through the carbon fibre every time. So it might be a little bit hard, but we'll see. So next thing you notice on this particular wing is that the, the flaps aren't actually cut from factory, they're actually stationary. On this wing, I have gone ahead and already cut the flaps because I wanted to test the foam, see if the foam hinge was going to be good enough. And yeah, they've left you more than enough meat on that uh, on that hinge there that you're not really going to have to reinforce it at all. So that's a really nice little bonus. Now, what they've also allowed for inside the foam is a place for your servo cable to hide. So if you're careful when you glue it, you're going to be able to hide your servo cable inside the wing without any problems at all. And it is nice that a full size 9 gram servo pretty well fits straight from, I might just give it a little trim from the bottom and a little trim for the top so your servo horn, but uh, a 9 gram servo does just fit in the wings. Probably designed for a 5 gram servo, but I think on a plane this big I wouldn't risk a 5 gram servo. I'm definitely going to be running some 9 gram servos, so I'll probably just notch out maybe a little bit more at the bottom there, uh, and that'll be really good. So that's the wings. Alright, let's move on to the next section. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is the actual main fuselage and the canopy. Let's just have a quick look at that. So it actually slots together quite nicely. It's got a couple of little locating pins at the front, and it sort of holds in there quite well. Uh, again, it is supplied with uh, a small 8mm piece of carbon fibre. Again, same, it's not the, the woven stuff, it's the pultruded stuff. There's a nice little channel in there for it, and that sits in there beautifully, so that's a, a nice little bonus. Okay, so let's have another quick look at this together. Now, the first thing you might notice on my kit is that it's actually cracked here, uh, and it's a little bit bent here. Now that happened in postage uh, from Banggood on the way to Australia. I did contact Banggood about the damage and they were good enough to give me a 50% refund on the whole kit. So um, it's a little disappointing that it's uh, it was damaged, but Banggood as always came through. So I, uh, I can't complain about Banggood's service, they're fantastic. So, okay, so next thing is, you'll notice the canopy clicks in there and it doesn't quite fit very well because of the damage, but I will repair that. Now the canopy is designed to have this wooden plate glued in, in place. It's nice they have allowed a cutout for a 9 gram servo here. So if you wanted to cut that top section out and put your pan tilt camera there, it's actually going to be reinforced by a nice big piece of wood there. So that's actually a really good idea that they've done that. They've also allowed for quite a large FPV transmitter and a hole for your antenna to come out. So the idea I think they were thinking is your camera, your transmitter and everything would sit in the, in the canopy and it slots in like that and it's actually supplied with a couple of magnets and another side, side of the kit which sits here and it just clips into place with a couple of magnets. So it's actually a really clever design, it doesn't weigh too much and it gives you a lot of options. Uh, and that would allow for a lot of room as you open that up it gives you a lot of room to, for your battery bay. Now while we're on the subject of batteries I'm planning on running mine on a Multistar 5200. Now I actually have two of these packs so if I want to go crazy long range I could actually run two of these but I think 5 amps in something so light should still give me at least half an hour in the sky and that should be pretty good. Now to give you an idea of the size of the, the bay this is a, a 3 cell 5 amp pack and that sits right at the front with a lot of space. To give you an idea of how much space is in here. It absolutely swallows that 5 amp pack up all the way to the front. You can even go mid if you need some uh, need, need to move it back for your CG. And realistically, you know, you could easily get your electronics in this tiny little area. So you could happily put 10 to 15 amps worth of battery in this in this airframe without too many dramas. So now while we do have uh, the canopy open, 
you will notice they've allowed for little passages uh, all over the place like if you want to run your cables up through for your ESC they've already allowed for um, your cables to run inside the fuselage to your motors uh, they've allowed for a little slot here for your motor mount to go in they've even allowed a little cut out here if you wanted to put your FPV camera right in the nose facing down so it is a quite a, a really well thought out kit and there's a, a clip in here which holds your landing gear which I'll show you guys later so yeah very very well thought out kit um, the actual foam itself is just your normal EPO it seems pretty resilient it doesn't seem to dent too much yes it is going to damage uh, on an impact but it is really really easy to fix so that's that's a nice bonus so okay so here's the, the first major modification I've done to mine I've decided that I have cut the side of the fuselage out and I'm going to turn this into a little door now the reason I've done that is they supply it with this ginormous board that you're meant to uh, put your gear onto or you know maybe you strap your battery to however you want to set it up maybe you want your gear in the front of your battery depending on how you're going to do your CG but I've decided to put the board basically smack bang in the middle of the, the, the line of the wing where it's kind of in the middle of the craft so you're going to get your best response from your gyro uh, and I wanted access to a the wiring if I need to replace it with a you know maybe an F3 or an F4 board or maybe I want to go back to uh, an APM or you know something along those lines later it just gives me the option that I don't have to totally disassemble the airframe I've now got quite a large port to now work through um, that gives me a lot of space to get my hands in work around you know, you're always working on these planes so I just thought hey I'll cut a big slot in the side and I'll make a little trap door for it that uh, I can put back in whenever I so desire so yeah it's not quite as tidy maybe as you'd like but um, you know, it is going to do the job just nicely and once it's back over the top you're never going to know so yeah I think that was a, a worthwhile thing for me to do okay so the next lot of modifications I have done uh, is in regarding to the tail servos now the servos for this plane were definitely designed to be a 5 gram servo and I'm not a big fan of 5 gram servos uh, I've never really found any that really hold very well with uh, a gyro those sorts of things so I'm, I'm back to 9 grammers and 9 grammers really weren't designed for this application so the first thing you'll notice is the way they've spaced the tail out basically the elevator servo is going to impact on the rudder servo quite badly if you go to 9 so when you actually insert that you'll notice that it comes over into the pocket so you get your 9 grammar and the depth of the 9 grammar comes over and actually interferes with the pocket for your other servo that's where your other holes were so I've actually had to lift a whole servo up I'll grab another servo Okay, so I've had to lift this whole pocket size up so it, it misses the bottom and then I'll go back and once it's all glued in place I will go back and fill that in with a little bit of foam. So it does look a little untidy having those little other bits and pieces but I think the benefit of having the 9 gram servos in there far outweighs uh, any negatives. Uh, from what I've found uh, you might be a little bit worried that having you know, 12, you know, 13 grams of the servo times 2 because they are a metal gear uh, is going to affect your CG but I'm not struggling for CG even with a single pack and that's without uh, putting any FPV gear on the plane so uh, at the moment it looks like it's going to CG really really well so um, alright well I think that was a worthy thing for me let's see how it goes the last little thing I'm going to quickly talk about is actually the elevator now it was supplied with a tiny little slot here for maybe a, a one, one and a half mil piece of carbon fibre. Now they didn't actually supply the carbon fibre with the kit which is a little bit disappointing. And they only sort of had the slot about halfway down the wing and it really wasn't adding too much strength. So I haven't actually glued this in at the moment but it is a, a two millimetre thick solid piece of carbon fibre that I had from another build and I've basically uh, enlarged and made it a little bit deeper so once I glue that in that'll give a lot of rigidity to the elevator uh, and hopefully you know it won't bend uh, so much in the wind and also the airstream coming back off the uh, off the propeller so that should be that should be nice so that's most of the components let's see what else they supplied with the kit 
Okay, so the kit is supplied with a full complement of uh, linkages and clevises and everything you would need and they're all this sliding bar locking style thing which is actually really good um, if you're setting up your, your flight controller it makes you know, zeroing in all your flaps and bits and pieces super ridiculously easy when you land so that's a really nice feature that comes with those it does come with a little bit of double sided tape uh, it does come with some landing wheels which are removable quite easily it's got a little bucket that you glue into the frame and once it's in you just pop those in there or you can just pop them back out so reasonably easy so I'm not sure if I'm going to fly with the wheels yet or not that's to be decided it comes with some magnets which are designed for your hatch mechanism so there's your, your two pieces of your hatch with a couple of magnets and the kit is also supplied with some two different motor mounts and the idea with the two different motor mounts is this one would go inside the fuselage if you wanted to mount a really long inrunner and this would go in and around oh, I'll take that apart and I'll show you so the two differences on your motor mount is this one is designed to go internal and your wiring for your motor runs straight up so if you wanted to mount your motor like so or if you want to mount your motor on the outside like I'm planning on doing with mine it comes with both so it's nice that you don't really have to engineer anything and you'll sort of look at the way I've already sort of marked out my holes is I've marked them out slightly out of center so it's actually going to sit up higher than it should do so it's going to give me that couple of millimeters of clearance at the bottom here so it should just be enough so uh, one other thing is there is a nice little bay here um, at the back of the craft if you do want to put maybe your transmitter down the back here so it's away from interference or maybe this is where you want to put your FPV gear there's a lot of space on this craft you're not going to struggle for inter interference or trying to get things uh, a foot or foot and a half away from each other I think it's actually a really good design craft and I'm really looking forward to playing with it the one other thing I haven't mentioned is it does come with some decals so you can go ahead and put your, your funky little eyes or your teeth, those sorts of things on there. Uh, and it does come with another sheet of decals if you do want to go ahead and put it on. They seem like a pretty good quality. And EPO is usually pretty good for things sticking to it. So that shouldn't be too bad. So, alright, we've gone over a quick basic look. Oh, one other thing is it does come with some two-part epoxy. Uh, there's absolutely no instructions with the plane on how it all goes together uh, or what kind of glue or anything these are. You can see that mine had leaked a little in transport. I've actually popped these open and done a, a very quick test sample and it seems to be a, a five minute epoxy. It doesn't really set up really, really stiff like an Araldite. It's more of a, a flexible um, polyurethane kind of thing. So it'd be interesting. I'll glue one or two things together first and we'll see how that goes. Uh, if not, I'll just go back to probably Araldite and glue the whole thing back together. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for a bit more of a build and hopefully a couple of maidens soon. Thank you.